Hey, Ed Gollin, Speedcast. We're here every week, multiple times, and I'm here with Al West, my unicorn builder. Al, how the heck are you? Well, Ed, ready to do this. Let's do it. This is an incredible conversation. I know every vendor says that. I don't really know anybody else who's built the unicorn, but let alone built one back in the day. You were number nine. So there's a lot of learning that you're going to give us that people listening will say, oh, I could do that. I could add that to my sales process. Tell us how is a unicorn created or how does the birth of a unicorn concept get created in a startup so they then therefore follow that roadmap and throttle up into Unicornville? Well, Ed, I can tell you, you don't sit down to create a unicorn. You don't just sit down at the table and say, we want to create a unicorn. And, and you don't really have that that purpose in mind in the beginning. In the beginning, you're scrapping, you're, you're bootstrapping, you're just putting a company together and you're trying to build a company from the ground up. You're not really focused on unicorn. You, and if you are, you're focused on the wrong thing. You, you really are. And there's no real way to sit down and purpose build a unicorn. I'm convinced. You just don't sit down to do that because you're. it's an exercise in futility. That being said, how do you become a unicorn? It's the mm -hmm. convergence of a lot of different factors. It really is. First and foremost, it starts with a demand. And, and that starts with even saying, okay, from a demand perspective, we're solving a big problem. And once again, it, it cannot just be a, a simple problem. It has to be a very complex problem uh, or something. Uh, it's a problem that needs to be solved in a new way. And it has to be a critical business issue, not just a business issue. I disagree with you. I don't think it's demand. Uber did not have demand. Nobody thought of it. They created demand through mm -hmm. deep innovation, brand new model. So are you sure. saying demand and need, or are you saying create the demand and have the chops technologically so people say, wow, what is that? I'm saying it's, a, it's the convergence of both. You want a push where you're creating demand. You also want a pull where there's a, an affinity to buy already, where you don't have to create that affinity to buy. In other words, people are looking for a solution to a problem, period. And if technology solves it in a new disruptive way, then that's, that's great. And that can give you that slipstream that we've talked about before, where you have both the push and the pull. So you have to have a demand for whatever you're, you're selling. It sounds simple, but very, very complex. So that's where marketing comes in. That's where your brand awareness, all these things converge, but it really has to come down to, do you have a, a business problem that you're solving in the B2B world, not the B2C world? So I guess what it comes down to is if you want to go from 10 to 20 million and then hit 40 and figure out where your exit is, whether you're going to try to go to 100 and then 200 and then move into a unicorn status or just get the 40 million and sell your company and make a boatload of money, then these principles are universal. So you need real kick-ass marketing deep marketing strategy, align it to the technology, sell to the C-level, sell value, don't sell product. It sounds so basic. Why the heck is everybody not doing it? Because I get calls all the time and these people are not doing this and they're running startups. Well, there's, there's a, I said there was a convergence of a lot of factors, demand being one. Then there's the convergence of your product, your value statement, you've got the convergence of a lot of different parts of your company that have to all be firing on the right cylinder, on the same cylinder for the car to run smoothly. So you have to have the product, you have to have the marketing, you have to have the sales, all of these things, the professional services to implement it. You have to have customer success. All these things have to be firing together in order for that engine to, to run optimally. So all these cylinders running together is the convergence of the factors that I talked about, the demand, the solution, and then having the, the market presence to, to capitalize on all those three things. This is like a lot of work. What about if I'm doing 5 million or 10 million or 8 million, and I just want to get really good growth? What do I take out of how a unicorn is created and say, hey, I can use number three, number seven, and number two and I could use this in my little startup. So when it comes to growth, your growth percentage year over year is the number one factor that people are gonna look at when they give out valuation. You can have a 5X, 6X, 12X, 40X. It's gonna depend on your growth percentage year over year. 
And if you can get into that hyper growth percentage, your, your valuations are simply going to be higher. Now it's easier said than done. How do I get into that? You have to have the push strategy with your marketing. You have to have the pull from the market itself and the convergence of a lot of different factors. And we also have the analyst community in the tech world, you know, Gartners and the Foresters, they have to be on board with what you're doing. And in our case, we created a new category. And that is a luxury that so many people don't have, but it's a great learning experience. So I guess in summary, lessons learned is the way you save the money, get in market quicker and be smarter. And what's really difficult for me to swallow at times is why isn't everybody saying, hey, we should be talking to unicorn builders because they are the top of the heap. But they don't do that. There is no unicorn society. There is no unicorn speaking at the trade shows. There is no unicorn group on LinkedIn. And you know why? Because they made all this money. And you and I have made a lot of money in our career. They made a lot of money. They don't really care about anybody else. And they're the elite. And that's why we're doing these speedcasts. Because if the elite won't share, then you're screwing the people that are building the backbone to drive our economy. I know you think this way because I've had dinner with you a hundred times and yeah. after a good martini, this is what you say to me. <laughs> well, we've talked about this, Ed, and you know, one thing, one other thing to leave people with, and it, it comes down to, it's not just a matter of hard work, but it comes down to that timing element. When do you go for it? We decided in, in our unicorn, Hey, we're going to go for it. And what I'm, what we meant by that was we're growing pretty well. We're, we're actually in a, in a good growth. We're, and we're hitting 50 plus, 60 plus percent, but we really went for it because of the market dynamics. And we realized that if we could scale this thing rapidly, we could capitalize on those market dynamics. And if it, you have to look at the factors and your data is going to tell you whether or not you double down and go for it. And when it's time to double down, sometimes you're a penny wise and a pound foolish. Sometimes it makes sense to double down, to get the money, to accelerate your growth, to get that double X valuation factor, that that multi-percentage, that 12X to 50X uh, versus just a five or 10X when your growth is not hyper. -growth. That, my friend, is what we call leadership with a capital L. And you can't get that out of a Cracker Jacks box. So that's something we can't always give you, but people do learn about it and learn to do better. This has been another interesting episode. Speedcast, come join us, Al. You're my steady guy. I'm glad you were here today. It was good to be here. I hope uh, people get some value out of what uh, we talked about. That's the way it is. I appreciate that. All right. Thank you.